you would have loved to play for the national team. You still have yeah. that dream? Yeah, with the under 20 level, I had a chance to be with them, uh, to train with them for a while, and then uh, I had to travel. Something really came up, and then I had to break from it. Okay. But I still have the ambition that when I still keep working hard and I still playing and scoring my goals, I will be recognized very soon. Hello and welcome to Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Joseph Adamafio and today we're going to have a very intriguing interview with one of the Ghanaian players who plays the street in Bahrain. He goes by the name Enes Bafo. He came from Liberty Professionals, went on to play a while for Bichem United before traveling abroad to see what he could do for clubs abroad. This time in the Bahrain League, he's been scoring incredible goals, not just easy and simple goals but Charlie he scores screamers and all that we're going to see how life in Bahrain is for Ernest Bafo who is my guest on Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. Ernest ah 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 show them show them show them <laughs> yes so that is Ernest Bafo my guest yeah. for this episode of Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. Ernest yeah Welcome to Sports Check. Thank you, bro. What Thank a you. way to welcome yourself <laughs> and score in this yeah. short pool. Well, yeah. Charlie, how is life in Bahrain? Yeah, it's interesting. Bahrain is a small island and uh, it's with great people, great tourists. And life in Bahrain is very interesting. Life you know? in Bahrain is very interesting. Yeah. When you say interesting, I see you score <laughs> stupendous goals yeah. from long range, yeah. making good runs, dribbling the players and all that. Yeah. How are you able to do all that? Yeah, it's, it's all determination. You know, in Bahrain League, it's, uh, people just uh, uh, see it as a league that is not that strong. But it is strong. It's not a simple and easy league. So uh, it's all about hard work and uh, I don't joke in the gym, that's my home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's where the secret is all coming from. Yeah, so that is Bahrain. Bahrain, Bahrain but yeah. people say Bahrain is an, it's an easy league because no. Charlie, all the top players are playing in Europe and you are in Bahrain and yeah. all that. Yeah, now Cristiano Ronaldo is also in Asia, Bahrain is in the Middle East and uh, they are doing very well with the national team as well. They have good players. Um, they have good uh, coaches from uh, Europe. So it's not an easy league just like that. They have coaches also um, coaching some of the leagues, uh, the, the clubs. They are from Romania, from Italy, from Spain. Mm -hmm. So tactically and technically, the league there is not that easy. You need to work hard to achieve what you want. I'm sure you're yeah. not the only Ghanaian player in Bahrain. Yeah. Tell us about your other colleagues from Ghana yeah. who play also in the same league, league with you. Yeah, we have a couple of Ghanaians there who play uh, in the name of Ahmed Kamil. Okay. Ahmed Kamil is a left back. He plays in Bahrain League mm -hmm. and uh, he's doing very well for the league. We have uh, other players also from Ghana. Um, Godwin, also Kamil. He also plays in the Ghana League. And also, like I said, Ahmed also played in the Ghana League for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have a couple of players uh, who play in the, in the league in Bahrain and they are making good name. It's all about the hard work and, and the determination and they are making it. Yeah, they are making it. One player who left the Ghana Premier League to go yeah. and play in Bahrain yeah. is former Santi Kotoko player Fabio Gama. Yeah, How is yeah. Fabio Gama faring in the league since yeah. he joined? Yeah, he's been good, you know, but with the Bahrain League, like I said, it's not an easy league. He came there, uh, he signed for one of the big clubs there also, and he was playing with um, Al Muharak Club. It's a, it's a club that they, 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 they want a lot from the player. You have to be extraordinary, and we all know Fabio Gama, he's a very good player. But then, his first uh, four months with the club, they, they, thought, uh, they thought it wise to release him to go, you know, but Why? unfortunately... Even yeah, I because uh, the, no, the no, standard. he's he's very good player, but uh, the club has also other players who are playmakers. Oh. Okay, and he's also a playmaker, 
and they have about four playmakers, so they had to leave him to go on loan. So what you are saying is that you have to be extra because they yeah. have good players over yes, there. Yes, they have good players who are technically good. They have good players who are schemers. They are very good players. You know, the only thing they don't really, really, really have is the strength. Mm. They are not strong like we, the Africans, mm. the Ghanaians, we are strong. They are not strong like that, you know. So with Fabio Gama coming from Brazil, we all know him. He's a very good schemer, a good passer of the ball. But they have those qualities also like him there. So he needs to go on loan. So he went on loan and he did well with the club to promote them to the Premier League. So this football. Charlie. Yeah, this football, it's not, it's, you know. It's not, it's not easy at all. But between yeah. the Bahrain League and the Ghana Premier League, which one is tough? Yeah, I can say the Ghana League, when it comes to strength and uh, power, I say the Ghana League is strong. But with Bahrain, it's mostly technical. And uh, it's, um, the, the, the equipment, the gym, the, the other facilities there help the players to be able to you know, achieve everything for the clubs. But in Ghana, Ghana, we are talking about the physique, we are talking about the power, we are talking about the pace. We have it, but uh, when it comes to money-wise and technically-wise and uh, equipment-wise, Bahrain is ahead. Charlie, you yeah. talk about money, Charlie. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> say Bahrain there, Charlie, the money be there and everything. Is it, is, yeah. it, is it a fact that things are better in Bahrain than the Ghana Premier League? Yes, um, for, for all you know, when it comes to money-wise, I'm not the only person who is saying it live, you know, but a lot of, a uh, couple of players who have applied their trade outside, they come and they say, uh, when it comes to financial-wise, playing outside Ghana is the best, you know, because now in the Ghana League, they are doing their best, but financially, it is not strong, financially, it is not uh, high. So I would say financially, Bahrain League is higher than Ghana when it comes to finance. <laughs> yeah. You know why I'm laughing? You know. Because he came all the way from Liberty Professionals. Yeah. He grew yeah. up around Manprovi. Exactly. Played for community club like uh, Liberty Professionals. Yeah. In Dan Suman. Yeah. Tell us the journey at Liberty Professionals. How much were you being paid back then? <laughs> well, Liberty was not easy. You know, that, that, that time it was with Sly Tete, you know, and uh, Sly Tete, my boss, uh, may he so rest in peace. Yeah, he scouted me to Liberty from the youth side, um, the coast team, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now the coast team also, the coast clubs also, I don't know, but we are getting there. Uh, so uh, when it comes to money wise, uh, when I was in Liberty, yeah. oh, I was being paid like you know eighty Ghana cities those time. Eighty thousand. Yeah. No, sorry, eight, eighty cities. Yeah, eight, uh, eighty Ghana city today. You know, like today money eighty Ghana cities. Was it for one match or a month? No, for a month I was being paid like that. You know, but then it was increased to hundred cities. You know, because of my work rate and mm -hmm. I was playing game in game out. So. Uh, it was increased because I spent four years there. So after wow. my first two years, it was increased. Yeah, so that, that was how it got. But the reason why Liberty was being, mm -hmm. was paid that amount of money was because it was, uh, it started as an academy yeah. and the, 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 the boys were very young mm -hmm. and they didn't want to impose money on them. So they, they kept our money always moderate with every player. And it, we, there was an ambition there that it's not about money, but it, it's about hard work and you playing to succeed and playing the higher level. So we had that mentality those times with Liberty. And if you do well in the season, uh, Slightete automatically takes you out or you get a club or Kotoko come for you or another big club from Europe gets you. So that was the mentality in our head. It was not about money, it was about making the fame fighting and playing hard and getting to the top level so this is why when i was in liberty like our money was like in uh, that 80 ghana 100 ghana and we understood it because they put it in our heads mm -hmm. and we were very young so for you yeah. it's about passion not about money yes they train us to have the passion to play the 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 the, the edge to succeed in the football game and they put it in that's why we were called the scientific lads yeah, yeah so yeah. who are some of your uh, teammates growing up at Liberty? 
Well, I had uh, Derek Barton's brother. He was uh, with us, and Sule Muntari also had his brother. His um, name uh, Sariki. Sariki, yeah, Sariki was with us. Um, we had uh, Rabiu Mohammed also with yeah. us those time, yeah. And uh, Aziz Tete was with us. Yeah, oh, wow. Aziz Tete was with us. Uh, we had uh, we had a little bit of Kujo Asama with us, but it was not uh, just a short spell, and he left. You okay. know, yeah. We had a lot of good players now playing abroad, like uh, Isaac Saki mm -hmm. now with uh, Turkey. He's playing Turkey now. So our badge, we had a lot of players going out. Yeah. How did the death of Slaitete affect the team and also you? Because you said that yeah. uh, Slaitete made sure that the players who were very good yeah. got clubs abroad. Did yeah. this demise really affect you? Yeah, it, not only me, but a lot of players, it, they were affected, you know, because the man had a, like I said, he has an ambition for all the players. Not only you that you are doing well or not doing well, but each and every player, he had a, a strategy for you, like um, a target for you. And if you meet that target, sure, he take you out and you sign a contract and everything is okay. So like with me like this, it affected me greatly because he first took me to Egypt and I played with Haras Hadoud, he's the Premier League over there, and they really wanted to sign with me. But uh, they had to discuss with Sly Tete, who is the boss of Liberty. And then uh, before we know, his demise came and I couldn't, the, the movement didn't go on, the negotiations didn't go on and I couldn't have the access to go to Egypt for the first time, you know. Charlie. So it really affected me. Like if this man was alive, I would have been there already a long time in Egypt starting my career. But Charlie, yeah. nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> you still you still have your career intact and you're yeah. doing very well. And I yeah. think that you've come a long way. But looking yeah. at Liberty currently, mm. now they were demoted to the Division One League. Yeah. I know uh, I'm sure by now you also know the latest yeah. updates on Liberty Professionals. They've sold their Division One League um, okay. position to um, a club in the water region. So they are okay. not, they are going to focus mainly on course yeah. and academy football. Mm. You yeah. think they still have it because I think that was the mentality of Slightly yeah. to bring in young players. Yeah, yeah, they, they still have it. Now that uh, they are being demoted, like you are saying, uh, I think it's not only about, uh, I think it's also more about financial and other things that mm -hmm. uh, made them to come to the decision of um, starting an academy again. Okay. Liberty itself was started, growing, started growing up as an academy and then it grew and grew and then it was in the Premier League, you know. So them starting again, it's not, uh, it's not something that is new. They can still do it. They can bring in crop of players. They can also bring their scouts, come and take players. So I think it's a good decision they've taken to start all over again and to make things right. All right. Yeah. You are still watching Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. Yeah. My name is Joseph Adamafio. Yeah. We'll be taking a short break. When we return, we'll delve into life in Bahrain and how yeah. he found himself up there in Asia. My name is Joseph Adamafio. Keep watching Ghana Web TV. We'll be back soon. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry Twist Cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Mm. Premium quality cakes baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes. Simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back from the break. My name is Joseph Adamafio and you're still here on Ghana Web TV on the Sports Check Show. I'm here with NS Bafo, a Ghanaian striker who plays his trade in Bahrain. He's talked about life in the Ghana Premier League and life growing up. Charlie, growing yeah. up in Manprobi, Charlie, was it easy like that? <laughs> no, Manprobi is a hustling life, you know. <laughs> well, is it hustling life? Yeah. Charlie, tell us about it. Yeah, in Manprobi, you have to be tough. You have to be strong mentally, you know. Uh, growing up... Uh, 
<laughs> you need to be strong. Well, you say you need to be strong. How? Yeah. Charlie, a player who is being played, yeah. played 80 CDs, how yeah. are you surviving? Yeah, because uh, what, you, what you need to be doing is to manage, how to manage your finances. Mm. It also taught us that you've been given small amount of money, you need to manage how you're going to save, what you're going to spend per day. So it was like survival of the fittest in Manprobi. <laughs> you train as well and you have to manage and you have to eat well, sleep good, you know. So yeah, Man Manprobi is all about, there is a strong competition there mm -hmm. with a lot of players coming from there. So you have to be strong. That's did, what I mean. How did the players like? Stephen Apia, yeah. Michael Lisson, and yeah. Samoa Jans, who also yeah. played in the same community, yeah, inspired exactly. you guys. Yeah, especially Stephen Apia really, really inspired me, you know, because he's a workaholic, you know, when it comes to the game, he taught us how to work hard, you know. And you know, in Italy, where he was playing his trade, it's all about you being the toughest. You have to be tough, you know. Italian league, everybody knows <laughs> how strong it is. You, you have to be strong in the Italian league. So he inspired us that we can make it from Amprobi to be the captain of the Black Stars and to also play in big clubs in Europe. So the motivation alone really pushed a lot of us like that. How yeah. did the breakthrough come for you to get your first move outside Ghana? Uh, well, like I was saying the first time, Slytete called me one day and said, you are doing well, you can play in the Arab country, so just keep fighting. I said, OK. So I had to fight in the league to score a couple of goals for Liberty Professionals. And then uh, through that, I had my first move. Uh, with a, I made a couple of videos, video editing, and then uh, I pushed it to some agents, and then uh, it all started from there. Actually, Slytete brought the agent to me, you know, and he said to me, this agent is from Egypt, he's going to take you everywhere. Yeah, and his name is Hani Sadiq, maybe I mentioned his name, he's yeah. a little bit popular in the Ghanaian okay. terrain, yeah. He's, he, he brought up the likes of Kofi Bequin and mm. the likes of uh, Rick Bequin, He's, he was okay. helping them, okay. yeah. So he came up that we should uh, arrange some videos and then uh, sell it out. So that was all happened and I got my first move to go out. Which country was that? It was in Libya, you know. Libya? Yeah. So I mean, first time in Libya, <laughs> yeah. how was the house life like? Yeah, it, it was not easy there because that was the time that they had their problem, their issue, political problems. So, okay. I I rather signed a three years contract, but uh, uh, with the chaos and everything over there, after six months I had to leave. Mm -hmm. So that was why I left and came back to Beijing United, oh. and then uh, from Beijing United uh, I had a good season also, scored a couple of goals, and then uh, I made a video of it, and then it shoot me out also as well, and that was when I started moving to the Kuwait and to the Saudis from Kuwait to Saudi and to the rest of the Gulf countries, yeah. When you went to, uh, I think, Kuwait or Saudi, that was yeah. when you scored some incredibly great goals yeah. from long range and yeah. people started hearing about <laughs> NS Bafo. Yeah. Tell us about that kind it of... It was in journey. Saudi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I scored incredible goals in Kuwait, but the long range goals started in uh, Saudi Arabia. You know, when I was young and I started playing, I had this uh, vision of watching the goalkeepers to be able to shoot from long range and to score. So, as growing up, I nearly left it out. But later on, I recovered it that, hey, have you forgotten you are the one that scored those screamers? And yeah. So I started again and then I said, no, I will still continue now to be shooting the long range. So it started from Saudi where I shoot from the corner line to score and it was incredible and the whole of Saudi people were watching and they were marveled. So from there, I, I put up that attitude to be able to, <laughs> to mess up with the goalkeepers. <laughs> well, yeah. you, uh, you got the name Higuain, why were yeah. people calling you uh, Higuain and yeah. everything? Yeah, because uh, like, you know, the player called Higuain, he played for Real Madrid. And I think Napoli or so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So his type of striking, you know, the way he strikes, the way he scores, he's normally underrated. He's normally underrated. He's going, oh, he will lose the ball, he cannot score. 
but he's the one that makes the goals. He's the one that makes the, the champion of the team. He's the one that makes the clubs win trophies. So mm -hmm. people saw that in me as me scoring incredible goals. If you watch him win, I don't know if you if really I, I really yeah, 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 have yeah. a look I'm at him. He scores screamers, incredible goals, you know. So they saw that incredible goals from me way back in Liberty. And that name was given to me from Liberty. Okay. Yeah, okay. it was given to me because I, in Liberty, I was scoring marvelous goals and strange goals, like I would say. <laughs> but um, yeah. playing uh, in all these countries, would you say that um, you get not get an opportunity to play in Europe, or you say you are still living your dream? Yeah, I'm. I'm still living my dream. I don't really regret it. You know. You know, when the right time comes, I know I will go to the European terrain and I will, and I will, and I will show them what I got there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of people are saying, hey, he's playing in the Arabic country, they are not good players there, they are not doing well. But, hey, if they wait, they should just give me time when they get, I get to the European terrain, they will know it's not just in the Arab countries. But I always challenge people that if they say the Arab League is not strong, they should bring their player to testify. Ah. Yeah, I always challenge them. Bring your player to testify. Or let's say you have a player in the European League, bring him to testify in the Arabic League, then you know. There is so much strong, strong and Yeah, strength. They play very strong, especially the Saudis, they play very strong. They are now learning how to play strong because they are not strong. But now they want to play strong, mentally, physically, psychologically, because now they go for the physiotherapists from Europe, they go for the coaches from Europe. So the coaches psych them, the coaches teach them technically what to do. Yeah, so they are getting there. You see what Saudi did to Argentina? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... <laughs> How, tell, us, tell us about that. During the World Cup, after yeah. they won that game against yeah. um, Argentina, yeah. what was the feeling like in... Yeah, me, I already knew they would win against Argentina. I already knew. Wow. Yeah, so, because when you see Argentina's team, they are all technically good. But when it comes to strength and tactically, they don't really, they didn't really go in the game with this tactical play. Okay. They were all rushing to score, you know. And these Saudis went with a plan. They went with a motive. We defend and then we attack. So that's what they, I knew they would really score them. I knew. Yeah, I knew from day one. Because I know Arabs, they, when they get a club like, uh, a big club like Argentina, like Brazil, they want to show something. And they will give their all. As we come yeah. to an end on this particular edition of Sports yeah. Check, well, let's talk about you moving from Citra Club to your new club. Yeah. What yeah. inspired the move? Well, it was a tough decision to make because Citra was my parents' club like in Bahrain. I brought them from Division 1 to the Premier League and I stayed with them again and I had a very good season with them. And moving away from them to the one of the big clubs in Bahrain, RFA club, it was difficult, you know, but I had to make the decision because in life you have to move, uh, you don't have to stand in one place and then be the, the champion of the place. You have to move for more challenges. So I moved to, now I wanted to, a new challenge. I wanted a big club. I wanted to play in the AFC Cup and I wanted to show to the world what I got. So this is why I chose to go with the RFA club and then I had to move. Are you guys going to compete in the AFC um, yeah. championship? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, we are going to. Yeah, we are prepared. We have to we have to go through the playoffs, then we move to the group stages. Then with the group stages, that's where we are going to meet the likes of Kante, Cristiano yeah. Ronaldo and the, the other Arabic uh, the players that have come to the Arabic League. So we are hoping for the best. We are hoping to achieve more with Arifa Club. And uh, I'm happy to be with them. <laughs> yeah, because it's a big club. I'm yeah. sure growing up, you would have loved to play for the national team. You still have yeah. that dream? Yeah, with the under 20 level, I had a chance to be with them, uh, to train with them for a while. And then uh, I had to travel 
something really came up and then I had to break from it. Okay. But I still have the ambition that when I still keep working hard and I still playing and scoring my goals, I will be recognized very soon. And then they will really call me up very soon. <laughs> and then you refer to this video. <laughs> sharp, 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 sharp. Charlie, yeah. thanks so much for this yeah. interview. So that was yeah. NS Bafo over there. He plays yeah. in Bahrain and he's talked a yeah. lot about life in Bahrain, moving from the Ghana Premier League, playing in Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, you know, and says that if you're a player out there, you think that playing in Bahrain is easy. Yeah. Come and try and see. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's how we wrap up here on Sports Check. My name is Joseph yeah. Adam and Tos. A delight coming your way with Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. See you in the next one. <laughs>